Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at every single one of those power-ups and everything that they do in Super Mario Maker 2, because there are some interesting things that they can do and some interesting things that they can't do, and it's good to know what in the what, 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 what? Hopefully this should give you a better understanding of what power-ups will work better in different situations, because that's kind of the whole point. And I've even made a special series of levels to show them off. And no, I'm not going to upload them because they really are dull. For this video, in order to classify as a power-up, it has to appear in this wheel. If it doesn't appear here in any of the styles, it's not going to be included. Okay, stop right there, you. I just, 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 bah! There we go. Sorry about that. F future Alex here. <laughs> oh, what is my life? I've just been editing the video and watching it through, and I just, I just wasn't satisfied with not including everything that could be conceivably considered a power-up in Super Mario Maker 2. So you know what? You know what past Alex just said? Forget that. I'm going to be inserting all the other power-ups in this differently colored t-shirt as we go through. There'll be like a, a chunk where I add in all the extra stuff, because I don't want to do this by halves. I want to do it properly. Does mean this video is going to be a chonk, though. Anyway, back to old Alex. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. So here we are in the Super Mario Bros. style. We're basically going to go through these in standard order that they were released, essentially. Kind of. I mean, th there's a sort of certain logic to it, and then it all falls apart at the end because... Um, we will see. But let's start off with the Super Mushroom anyway. So this is the most basic power-up, and it gives you the power to break these sort of bricks. That's about it, really. Makes you slightly larger as well, so you can't fit through small holes, unless you uh, run and duck like that and slide all the way through. That's still a possibility, but it's really simple. That's basically all it does. It's the most straightforward, but we want it to be thorough. As I said before, also, it allows you to take one hit. Simple. That's why all those grinders there. Very helpful. So now moving on, we've also got the Fire Flower as well, which I'm going to pick up here. And I, I meant to get rid of that coin, but oh well. Not to worry. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, the Fire Flower, it's pretty self-explanatory. It bounces along like that, along the ground, and when it hits something, as you just saw, it destroys it, and it can destroy any number of enemies, uh, piranha plants. However, there are some things that it doesn't affect, things like buzzy beetles, you've also got dry bones because it's already dead, and munchers. Munchers are going to come up a lot in this video because there's a lot that can't do anything to a muncher. And uh, just like uh, the super mushroom, allows you to take additional hits. However, this allows you to take two additional hits. There we go. But now we move on to the big mushroom, yes! Am I recording audio? Oh yes I am, that's a relief. So this is the big mushroom, and as you can see it makes you kind of the same proportions as normal Mario or Luigi in this case, but so much bigger. And this allows you to break hard blocks by jumping into them like that, or as you just saw there, by jumping on top of them. You'll do a little bounce. Also, you kill Koopas differently, they don't leave a shell behind. And uh, it's, yeah, that's, that's basically all this does. Uh, in fact, I believe, hang on, I'm going to dub dug back down because I don't think I tested this. Can it destroy these? Yes! You can even destroy question mark blocks that have been used. Very spicy indeed. I have to, you know, have to be careful. I'm not going to be able to, I didn't think this one through. I think I got confused and put that one there by accident, but this basically allows you to take two hits, just like the Fire Flower. Very handy, very useful. Let's move on to the Goomba Shoe, or Karibo's Shoe, as I always remember it, because that's what it is now. This is where things start to get a little bit complicated, because yes, it is an enemy, so I've got to make sure I don't die when I try and capture this shoe. So there you go. You can just hop, or hop along in this shoe. You're a little bit slidier than you were before, but it's very useful. You can walk on things like thwomps and munches and spikes, uh, spike traps. Very handy. It can also defeat things like piranha plants that otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Very useful. However, there are variations on this as well, and we've uh, kind of combined them all into one here, as you can see. <laughs> so let's get this one as well. So this is a giant stiletto. Now, stilettos generally don't do any different. They just, it's just a purely sort of aesthetic thing. However, a giant uh, stiletto does have different properties. Uh, whilst a giant, uh, well, I'll show you. Um, a uh, giant shoe can do that little ground pound, and as you can see, that will take out a muncher. Not a thwomp, but it will take out a muncher. Let's see if we can get the other one from here. 
just about, there we go. So a normal giant Karibo shoe or Gumba shoe will do that as well. However, the stiletto is special because you can also ground pound and destroy thwomps. Very spicy. And again, just like the normal shoe, this too can smash all the way through even blocks. Not spike blocks though, but the special thing about the, uh, the stiletto is this. You can also destroy Bill Blasters, which is a very, very rare talent. And as you can probably see, this has got wings on it as well, which by holding the jump button, you can float up a bit higher. Very useful, very handy. We should, uh, let's take this through. I've just remembered why I, uh, no, I didn't get confused. This is meant to be for here because uh, even though it's such a powerful power-up, it cannot be uh, damaged by grinders. And I didn't intend for that. I intended for it to basically say, it, you only get one hit, basically. Just imagine you saw me taking damage for that. It's a very simple thing and uh, very useful as a result. Now, the last one is the uh, for the Super Mario Bros. style is the... <laughs> Well, as you can see, it's the Starman, which destroys pretty much any enemy. Not a muncher, but it will even defeat the Angry Sun, which is very, very useful. It basically makes you impervious to damage. However, you can still lose a life by falling off the edge into a pit. Not even a Starman can save you from that. But anyway, that's all about Super Mario Bros. Let's have a look at Super Mario Bros. 3, or Brothers. Every time I say Bros, if you prefer me to say Brothers, just imagine I'm saying Brothers. You'll get over it. Here we are in Super Mario Bros. 3 style. Now there's only one thing to look at that's any different from the others. And that is this, the Tanuki suit. Well, it's not the Tanuki suit, it's the uh, Raccoon Mario, if you like. Now this is uh, a very different power-up compared to all the others we've looked at because it gives you the ability to slowly float down, which is very useful by rapidly pressing the jump button as you're falling. Very handy. What it can also do is by pressing the run button, blip, you can knock enemies about, including the bombs, which we'll get over there because otherwise it'll ruin the next thing. It can also uh, be used to destroy and uh, activate blocks and things like that. However, again, munchers remain impervious. But there is another string to this thing's bow, which you're about to see. You can fly with it and even get up into uh, top reaching pipes that you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach. Very useful. Thank you. Super Leaf, it's the Super Leaf, isn't it? And again, just like all the other sort of like double power-ups, Two hits, there we go. And you're back to standard Luigi. Lovely. Super Mario World now, and we're gonna start things off with the Super Feather, because that's kind of the logical sort of step in my mind. And uh, the, the Super uh, Feather, which gives you the uh, the cape, is very similar to the Tanuki, uh, the, the Super Leaf in many regards. However, it is slightly different at the same time. You've still got the same thing where you can defeat enemies by pressing the run button and spinning around. And again, the same with uh, boxes and stuff, but again, uh, but again, not munchers. You can't take out munchers with this thing. And I got a little bit close there, but it's fine. And uh, th another thing that is interesting is rather than having to rapidly press the button, you can do that uh, to slow your descent, or you can just hold it down and you have a much smoother, slower descent. And I, I much prefer it to be honest. But again, like the Super Leaf, you can fly and you can even land where I didn't intend <laughs> to land. <laughs> You can fly up in the air, and you can slowly come back down, and you can even, uh, if you get your timing right with the left and right button on the D-pad, or indeed the C-stick, uh, or the thumbstick, you can even get extra height like that, which um, you can see up there. <laughs> but play around with it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and again, just like the uh, Super Leaf, we can... Oh no, there is one more thing actually before I jump up there. If you hold the direction you're... By holding the direction you're facing, you can slam into the ground and do what is essentially a POW dive, I suppose. And that destroys even munchers, which is a very, very potent tool. And I'm not going to be able to get up there now, am I? Because I put too much pressure on myself. Ah! Did I even make that a warp pipe? I didn't even make it a warp pipe. Oh, it's going well. So let's move on now to another thing that's kind of a little bit borderline, but it's Yoshi, isn't it? Yoshi's kind of a power-up in his own way, and yet he is so much more at the same time. So here we are, we've got Yoshi. What can Yoshi do? Well, Yoshi's a very clever boy. He can eat enemies, and he can also eat coins. Um, by default, he'll uh, sort of... Uh, I suppose tongue. He'll lick. He'll extend his tongue lower if you hold the up on the D-pad or indeed control stick. When you press the run button, you can uh, you can do it at a more reasonable height like that. And also, you can eat things through walls, including 
fuzzy beetles. And then they can just bounce back and forth there and then forever. Um, but there is another version of Yoshi as well, which we should make a note of if, if I can get off him properly. You get off by pressing the, uh, the spin jump button, which is the uh, one of the shoulder buttons. We have the red Yoshi, which comes from a uh, when you give a Yoshi egg a super mushroom for some mad reason. And instead of licking, he instead, he fires a fireball he does. This not only will kill enemies, it'll also set off the bombs, but it will not defeat a muncher or indeed other things like buzzy beetles. They are impervious to fire for some reason, and I don't know why. Much like the Goombashu, Yoshi as well is impervious to grinders when he jumps on them using his foot or indeed feet. He's got lovely thick shoes on, so he's fine for that. However, if he does take damage, um, which is now going to be a while because the fire bar is taking its time, there we go. You take a hit. You've got the invulnerability frames, but uh, Yoshi doesn't disappear. He merely runs back and forth. So um, we've saved this Yoshi, and uh, I think it's time to give him a little bit of a break. You can also use Yoshi to jump off and get extra high, which is really useful. Again, using the shoulder buttons. I didn't mean to go through the door. You're not supposed to see this yet. One quick little extra thing I do need to point out in regards to the Super Mario World theme is that when you've got the Super Mushroom, it has an additional effect. And the same goes for the, uh, the, 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 the cape and stuff like that. You, when you spin jump, you can destroy blocks like this. But only when you're Super Mario or indeed Luigi or something like that. Just being small does nothing. And finally, my least favorite theme, I have to say, and it doesn't have a lot to show for it either. And I think I meant to enclose this at one point, but you know what, it doesn't matter. It's about the power-ups, not how pretty this particularly small level is. Oh my god, I didn't do anything. So the propeller mushroom, <laughs> yes! Thankfully it was nice and quick to put together. So as you can see, the propeller mushroom makes you propeller Mario, Luigi, Toad, Toadette, whatever, and it allows you to do that simply by pressing one of these shoulder buttons when you're... No, you don't even have to be in the air when you're just on the ground or anything. It allows you to shoot up and gain ridiculous amounts of height, and uh, in fact I believe I should even be able to... Oh yes, I can get on top of the boundary, which I shouldn't be able to. Well, I mean, I should. Um, but this can be really useful as well. You can use this to uh, propel your way through lots and lots of blocks. So you can also use it uh, in co combination with uh, down to essentially ground pound all the way through. It's kind of like a continuous ground pound and it's very useful. Um, having said that though, the actual applications of this, not enormous. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still fun. It's still good fun, and I like it. And that's the only thing different in New Super Mario Bros. U style. One of the reasons I'm not so fond of it. But like all the other power-ups, yep, two hits, just like all the others. So it's nice and handy if you need to take some damage. Yes. Well, hey, future Alex back again, and we're going to be looking at the other power-ups that uh, I didn't include. And we're going to do it in the new Super Mario Bros. U style because I, f I feel a bit bad for ragging on it. I'd had a long day and it <laughs> just wasn't in the mood. So anyway, we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at this. This is the Shelmet. And you pick it up just by holding the run button and then pressing down plops that on your head for some reason. Now, this is a very spicy little number because it protects you from falling things from the top and not even just falling things, things generally. But thwomps, yeah, they can't do any harm to you from the top. You can even jump into them and send them up higher than they should be. However, they will always protect you from uh, lava bubbles as well. And they will always return to the original height that they were placed in after a while. Uh, it can't destroy blocks any more than usual, but it can protect you against munchers, which is really, really not to be sniffed at. And if I can time it right, eh, there we go. I can even escape. And uh, what's more, it also gives you an additional hit from the side. Uh, protects you from the top, but not from the side or indeed the bottom. Uh, however, there is a variant on this as well, which we're going to be looking at here. The spiked shelmet. You put it on exactly the same way, hold the run button to pick it up, and press down on the D-pad or the left stick. This is even better because it not only protects you, but it defeats things like thwomps and l lava bubbles that you were defeating them anyway. However, it can also destroy blocks. It cannot destroy spike traps. They are considered impervious, and the standard shell mitt will also uh, protect you from this. Uh, but this, when it comes to munchers, ho 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 ho, that's a satisfying sausage. And as I showed you before, this will protect you um, just like the standard shell mitt from a single hit from the side if I can time. You know what, there's a... 
There we go. I didn't realize there was a spike trap there. It would have been easier when I was practicing. Next up, we're going to have a look at the Dry Bones Shell, because this is a brand new item as well in Super Mario Maker 2. You put it on exactly the same way as the shell mitts, hold it using, uh, using the run button, and pressing down. Alternatively, uh, let me just show you, you can just jump directly into it and you can jump into you know from underneath the shell mitts as well but you've probably seen that happen already however the dry bones shell is quite different it's protecting you from underneath for example as we can see here i can go in lava like this doesn't affect you at all you're a little bit slippery and slidey like you're in a liquid even though lava is a liquid but wouldn't be this viscous it would be more viscous but that's a topic for a different video this will also work in water you can jump out of it basically you are messing about in a boat made from a dry bone shell however it has another little party trick uh, as you can see there's a thwomp coming over and oh no whoa by pressing down pressing and holding down specifically to uh, make sure you get it for a good long time you can uh, basically make yourself invulnerable like that basically becoming like a dry bones in that sense. It's really, really handy. Also, munchers, spike traps, nothing. Nothing's going to stop us now. And even more importantly, it protects you from the side, which I don't think most people realize. Let's get that thwomp over there. You can also jump out of it mid. That was a silly thing to do. You can also jump out of it mid jump. Oh, I did it again. I'm holding the run button. You can also jump out of it in midair and then land in it as long as you're not holding the run button. <laughs> and uh, you will, uh, you can get some ridiculous heights on it as well. Much like uh, Yoshi, for example, which we can see here. I should be able to get on the boundary. Yes, I am able to. How about that? And as before, this gives you just one additional hit like that. And is Luigi going to be able to get out? Yes, he is. He's a good boy. And now we move on to the clown car, which is technically considered an enemy in the game, but uh, we're going to show it off anyway. So uh, as you can see, this allows you to move around freely. You slowly fall down if you don't press anything uh, on the directional pad or the left stick, but you can just fly around freely and uh, it allows you to be able to fly it completely indefinitely. You can stay in this as long as the timer lasts. You can also defeat enemies by just bopping them on the head like that. However, it does not not protect you, as I'm about to show you, from the side. It basically doesn't really give you any additional hits. Well worth remembering. But poor old Luigi isn't going to give up without a fight now, is he? No! He's going to use this variant, which is the fire clown car, and I'm, I'm automatically charging it up. This basically allows you to flip fire a fireball directly outwards, which will keep traveling until it hits something. Very spicy indeed. And indeed, with like with the other clown car, you can exit out of it for a bit of additional height, if you wish, by using one of the trigger buttons. Uh, however, if you charge the run button down, you can even destroy hard blocks. Now that is especially useful and especially spicy. Pick up a coin, jobs are good. Now you might be wondering, well, what's that third block? Well, it was just put in here for convenience, to be honest, because it's not its not a clown car, but it follows a very similar idea. This is the Lakitu cloud, or the Lakitu cloud, if you prefer. And basically, this just allows you to fly around in the same way. Not quite as slippery as the standard um, clown car. However, as you'll probably see in a second, it does not last forever, and Luigi will just fall out. And it does not give you any additional hits or anything like that. So it's limited, much more limited than the clown car, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of faster, I suppose. Yeah. And lastly, we move on to the Koopa Trooper car, as you can see here. Now, I'm actually not pressing anything, and it's still moving around off its own volition. Like like a car. No, you, you have to you have to control a car. But even so, you can change direction, you can jump, you can see that there's a Meowser in there, which was supposed to be a little surprise. And uh, you can basically create little courses like this that bounce around, and Meowser should have been up there, but he's not. What you're gonna do and uh, you can also use it to damage enemies like that by driving into them or indeed on them like that and uh, it's quite difficult to control <laughs> but uh, it is very rewarding if you manage it here we go and so you can even just sort of bounce indefinitely on Meowza which usually you can't do because he's got spikes um, which is really useful but as you can see the car is looking a little bit worse for wear because it does not have an infinite amount of health Come on, we can take him out, can't we? There we go, easy peasy. Meowza's down. However, I've taken two hits with this car now. What happens if I drive into a wall? It's gone, and it's hidden behind the make button. But even so, that is the Koopa Trooper car. The, 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 Koopa, the Koopa Trooper car. I'm going to hand you back to old Alex now, Pasto Alex, to see uh, 
He he'll take care of you, don't worry. Although I should say that everything from here on in, bar one power-up because I'm an idiot, is in fact a spoiler, and so if you'd rather remain spoiler-free for the story and unlockables in the game, we recommend you stop watching now. Um, we just recommend you stop watching now, basically. Are you, are you still here? Okay. Your funeral. I've actually got to go to a different version of the game because I've not unlocked it on the retail version because I'd, I'd like, I'd just done story mode. I wasn't ready to do it all again. So the first power up, which, <laughs> which isn't a spoiler, but, um, it, it just, it just, it just made the most sense to do it this way and to be, it was simplest. Sue me. Please don't sue me. Yes, it's the cat bell, which is a personal favorite of mine as well. And this is a wonderful thing. By pressing the run button, you can swipe forward like a cat and you can destroy crates and blocks and even activate exclamation mark blocks, which is really, really, really handy um, because you can do it from the side. You can also climb on walls by pressing up on the D-pad or the control stick when you're up against a semi-solid platform like this. Really useful, allows for a lot of variety in different kinds of levels. I like it a lot. Uh, you can also dive through the air using the um, uh, using one of the trigger buttons, like that, or indeed uh, shol shoulder buttons. Yeah, shoulder buttons as well. I never use them, but it's good to know they work. <laughs> and those also can uh, activate those blocks. And you've probably seen that I've been uh, grabbing onto the side of this wall here, because yes, as a cat, you can also climb up walls. And again, you can get to uh, pipes you wouldn't be able to normally, which is most handy. And yes, two hits again, pretty standard. No grinders in 3D world, so we had to use the uh, spike blocks. I hope you can forgive us. And now moving on, this is where we're actually into spoiler territory. We have got the super hammer, which um, basically gives you a big hammer. And uh, there's a couple of things you can't hit, like pipes and most objects, to be honest. And you'll sort of recoil from that, so you need to be careful. However, there's quite a lot that you can, like those blocks. You know, ones that used to be question blocks and are now used. You can also do that on crates, as well as um, hard blocks and normal blocks, and even ice blocks and enemies, especially if they get in the way of your initial swing. Uh, but there's another feature of this as well, which we've touched on in the past, um, but you may not have seen that video, because... Do you watch all the videos? I would be surprised if you did. Basically, if you hold up, you'll notice Toadette or whoever starts doing that. And then if you press the run button, you produce a crate out of nothing. It's really weird. And uh, these behave just like normal crates. You can uh, you can pick them up, you can throw them, you can uh, even destroy them uh, if you wish, if I can. There we go. Um, no, I'm holding up. And there you go, you can have up to five crates out at any one time before they start disappearing. So be careful. But yeah, overall, really different power-up and not one that we've really seen before. It's a good. And lastly, we have my favorite addition to Super Mario Maker 2 in terms of power-ups at the very least, the Super Ball Flower, which comes from Super Mario Land. And again, we've touched on briefly in the past, uh, but I want to show it off in a little bit more detail here. So. That's the best thing about this whole power-up. But anyway, uh, the Super Ball power-up is, uh, it may look a little bit like the Fire Flower to begin with, but it's very different, as you probably just saw there. You fire balls instead, and they can be used to just, uh, defeat enemies like that, or if I can get the positioning right, oh yes. They can bounce around, collect pink coins, standard coins, and even activate P-switches. It's really, really powerful and uh, allows you to do all kinds of crazy things. However, it does not activate on off switches, which I was a little bit disappointed by because I thought that would be really cool. But uh, you know what, it's, it's no big thing. I'm sure if you're clever, you could find some way to make it work by like some mad contraption. Some Somebody will somebody will do it, won't they? Somebody will do it. And just like all of the other premium power-ups, two hits, jobs are good. And, and there you have it. Yes, future Alex here again, spliced on top because the outro has got to be a little bit different because I put my foot in it originally. Basically, that is every single power-up in Super Mario Maker 2, including all the stuff we weren't going to include, but we decided to anyway for you. And we hope that you learn how to, you know, how better to sort of create levels and to use power-ups in a clever and efficient manner and maybe sort of, maybe decide against a certain power-up in favour of another to better improve your level. Because if your level wasn't perfect, 
I don't think I'd be able to sleep at night. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you drive that subscribe button into Meowser and see whether he goes Rawr! He probably will. <laughs> be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>